Welcome to the European Classic. This is the fourth in our series. We're on home turf here. Uh, we're situated on the ninth hole. And it gives a nice little backdrop because behind us you can see the beautifully renovated clubhouse of San Roque. Uh, the driving range where we're very fortunate to have our academy. And as we said, this is our home for the past four years. The old course, what an amazing job they've done in turning this old classic now with all sorts of extra little nuances, beautifully modern, environmentally friendly, and I think the design now lends itself to an even greater level of shot shaping. So have a look at this series. We're gonna feature four holes on the front nine. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to hole number two on the old course at San Roque. This has always been ranked the hardest hole on the golf course and let's have a little insight into the why. So if we look behind me, we're flanked with outer bounds down the left, down the right. There's a subtle dog leg off the tee. As you can see, the corner is protected by the trees and just for an extra slice of difficulty, where you would be aiming, which is slightly down the right-hand side, you've got two beautifully positioned bunkers. So it's really putting a premium on your tee shot. A low bullet draw as the wind tends to be the prevailing wind off the sea, which is playing into. You've now really got to hit that nice low bullet draw, but that's just the half of it. When we go further down the fairway, we're gonna see the second part of why this hole is such a tough hole. So we've turned a great tee shot now around the corner in the middle of the fairway. If we look into the green here on number two, look what we're faced with. Pinpoint wise, so we put our nice little dispersion circle together. Really, we're only fitting a 4% miss each side. You're kind of in this realm of about 175 yards into wind. What a deep, nasty bunker on the left and no bargain with the water on the right. The water really eats in. And then on the, the, the front of the green, you've got quite a slope going from left to right. So you've really got to manage your game on this hole. Sounds a little bit negative, but a five is not a bad score. Third hole, super little par four, great risk reward hole gives you a really good opportunity to be quite aggressive off the tee, uh, especially for today's prevailing winds. You can hit a driver and some of our super competitors, superstar competitors can leave themselves with something like, maybe like a 70 yard wedge shot. And the great design and defense of this hole is the green. It's a little bit similar to that of the third at Augusta. So depending on where the flag is, you've really got to adapt your wedge play accordingly. So anything on the left hand side, you've got to guard with the runoff that's on the left of the green. Don't be too greedy in flag hunting there. If you have a front right flag position, uh, you've got anything short is gonna come running back some 40 yards, leaving you with a very difficult pitch shot back up to the green. A little bit long and right, you've got a bunker. And probably the, the friendliest flag is the one that we have today, where it's a little bit more kind of middle back right. That one you can then be clever, you can use the slope, back the ball up and give yourself a great birdie chance. The eighth hole, this is one of the most intelligently designed green complexes I think I've seen in the world. Uh, it's a relatively short par five, so downwind players can be going for the screen with maybe even as little as a nine iron or a pitching wedge in their hands. However, let's have a look at this green because you can easily walk off here with a six or a seven and you've done very little wrong. You've got some big slopes guarding the front, so anything with any spin is gonna come running off and with a gradual bias going to the water and as you can see, the water is going all the way around the right-hand side of the green. So anything even landing on the green here is now going to get this slope and it's just going to find its way into the water. So you've got false fronts, you've got false sides, 
Again, anywhere down this right-hand side, you can see with the speed of these greens, they're running at about 12 on the stim, bit of breeze. Anywhere on this section here, again, now the ball has gone into the water on the right. So the smart play is really to utilize the fringe and apron off to the left-hand side here. So that way you can kind of almost respect your dispersion, your miss. You can be more intelligent. And this is the great thing, the quality of the fringes here, if we look nice and closely, I mean, they're like most golf courses green. So very puttable, if you like a putter, if you like to putt with a three wood. You've now got that option now to play at all the different angles. You're still faced with a tough shot, but it's a smarter way to play this very, very tricky, nuanced green par five. Hole number nine on the old course. Really good par four dog leg from right to left. So if you can shape your tee shot, really get it maneuvering safely around the corner, you can leave yourself almost in attacking position, giving yourself somewhere around about 100 yards, 120 yards, depending on the direction of the wind. And then the beauty of that is you're gonna leave yourself a shot where you can actually utilize maybe some of the unknown slopes or overseen slopes that are on the left-hand side. And all of those slopes now feed into the flag. It's quite a long green, it's quite a deep green. There's a ridge in the middle, but again, if you can avoid some of the overhooking trees on the left, get yourself that nice little three-wood turning around the corner. You've got your spin control dialed in. Use the slopes on the left. You should be leaving yourself a nice birdie chance. So I hope you enjoyed part one of our AAA series on the old course, covering the front nine. The next time for the AAA Open, we'll be covering the back nine holes. So as we know, tension's getting high now. We've got two tournaments left for the players to qualify for the world final. Let's see who can make it into the top 45 boys and the top 15 girls. Stay tuned on our media channels and please follow live scoring.